Uh, hi, my name is Sue Grant from Burthen, and I'm sitting in the main saloon of um, Song of the Whale, which is a 72 foot steel cutter, which is a well known site here at Burthon. We've known her since the beginning, and with me is Richard McClanagan, who is a director of Marine Conservation Research International, which is a not for profit organisation which owns and operates this astonishing boat which is involved with research work relating to, not surprisingly, whales and cetaceans. Of course, Song of the Whale first came to us at the very beginning. She was designed by Limington designer Simon Rogers. She was built locally, so we have seen her in and out of Limington ever since. Good to mention that we also have a long history uh, prior to this, this particular iteration of Song of the Whale. The, the former Song of the Whale, which was an Oyster 46, also spent uh, a lot of time in Burfins and in fact was sold from here by you. So. Yes, I mean we sold the yacht and she's in private ownership, still going strong. And this was the next step up. And um, Richard, if um, this boat and the previous Song of the Whale were operated by IFOR, that's right, isn't it? That's right. So in 1987, IFOR, which is the International Fund for Animal Welfare, started the Song of the Whale project um, and, and grew it over many years until in 2009, uh, during a restructuring, IFOR passed ownership of the vessel onto marine conservation research to continue um, growing in the project. That must have been a very scary moment when you heard that uh, you were going to be uh, the owners of this fine vessel. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it, it, it was Big very scary and it continues to be scary. It's, uh, well, as you know better than most, uh, boats of this size have a habit of absorbing vast quantities of money. They're mm -hmm. very expensive to run. Um, and although, you know, compared to other commercial research vessels, Song of the Whale is, is a relatively cheap um, operation. It, it's still a fairly hefty undertaking and uh, you know we're a small organisation so it's an ongoing struggle to keep things going and now we've, we've been going, um, the project itself has been running for over 30 years so we're very committed to keeping, to keeping and it And it also must be really important that you keep the spirit going and you're actually um, doing the research work that is needed and necessary and finding the people, the partners to work with and all the rest of it. That's right, yes. I mean, it's important to be doing the conservation work on a sort of day-to-day -day or month-by-month -month basis, but in addition to that, we've had a long-running student intern programme where we've had international students and guest scientists from all over the world join us on our project projects over the years, and, and that's been a stepping stone for many of those young scientists into important positions today. So, as well as keeping the project going for its own sake, it's, it's a, a fantastic sort of nurturing opportunity for the next generation of marine scientists and conservationists. Which is very important. And so she's now back with us. She's had a bit of a pit stop. Um, how many miles has she sailed so far and what are you doing to her now? I think, I think since we launched Song of the Whale in 2004, we've done something around 400 or 450,000 miles. Wow. Um, and we're back in the UK in Burthens at the moment just doing a few electrical projects and a few pieces of work on the rigging. Having been out on, on a number of projects that have run back to back for almost two years, so we've, we've been saving a few oh, biggish so, yeah, projects yeah, yeah, that yeah. Need, need doing now. Um, we're pretty much finished with that and, and preparing to move the boat back up to Ipswich, which is close to our office. And, uh, and at the moment we're, we're trying to develop some new projects and bring in funding to support those. Now, of course, the, the boat is key. I mean, it's an extraordinary thing. Everybody knows about her, certainly in Lymington, she's a bit of an icon. But it's not just the boat, it's the people. No. So tell us about the team, Team Song of the Whale. Okay, so the boat, the boat is a tool at the end of the day, a very important tool, purpose designed and built for the type of work we do. We're able to operate in any ocean. We've been in the Antarctic and the Mediterranean, North America in the last last couple of years, but it's it's really the team that is able to work on board the boat that's, that's key. And um, Cause it's not just a bunch of sailors, is it? This is no, about science. No, so uh, you know our primary role is is scientific research, and we have professional scientists on our team. 
um, and we, we look for kind of hybrid type people. So we have highly skilled and experienced scientists who are very capable sailors and then we also have professional sailors on the team who are um, above and beyond anything else. They've got to be interested and motivated by the type of work we do because we don't operate in a them and us type culture. Everyone takes part in all aspects. Including the students? Including the students and we find you know at the end of the day although we're 72 foot and it's, it's a fairly big hefty boat it's important that you involve everyone in all aspects of the work because that means that we're all pulling in the same direction rather than having uh, a sailing and operating crew. Oh, and then, got a their, and then a separate, yes, a separate yes, scientific okay, team. It's, if you have them all working together, so that means, mm -hmm. you know, everybody takes their turn cooking, everyone cleans the heads, everyone stands a scientific watch, and that means that we're all working towards the same goals, mm -hmm. and it, it makes for a much more harmonious way of living. And, and you can't see now because we're in the saloon and the galley is, is next to us, but um, further forward there are banks of computers and that sort of scientific research. And from what I understand, whales um, like it to be quiet. And so if you're going to actually um, find whales, silence is something that's pretty important. And a song of the whale has been designed so that um, you can pick up the uh, sounds of the whales more easily. Song of the Whale, is, it's imperative that Song of the Whale is a really quiet boat and that's because the primary way that we find and count and look at the behaviour of whales is by using the sounds that they make to communicate or to navigate. A particular area of expertise is in what we call bioacoustics. So we use the sounds that whales make and that's their primar primary sense. They use sound to navigate to hear what's going on. Around them, and we we use hydrophone arrays, so under very sensitive underwater microphones, to listen out for the noises that whales make, and we use that to find them, to count them, so we can do population estimates, and in some cases to track them and try and understand what they're doing at the time. So it's very important when we're listening for those very low-level signals that the boat itself is as quiet as possible. So when we designed and built Song of the Whale, a lot of work went into reducing the noise the boat itself would make. And that's not just mechanical noise, but electrical noise as well, because the systems that we use to listen for the whales are very, very sensitive. And if you've got you know, stray electrical noise, um, you pick that up on the systems as well. So we're always looking to for ways to improve that. So Song of the Whale is regarded as one of the quietest non-military research vessels in the world. Really? Yeah. Can you just uh, tell us which is the most iconic project that uh, Song of the Whale has done? What is the standout project? Wh which is the project that you look back at and you think, wow, well, we've, we've done a lot of exciting projects over the years, but I guess one of the really big important ones was we worked on the North Atlantic right whale, which is the most critically endangered of the large whales. There's a remnant population of around 400 or so. It was hunted close to extinction um, from very early on, well before the Industrial Age, in fact. Wow. And they're now, they were previously found all across the North Atlantic, but now the remnant population of only just over 400 I think is off the east coast of the US and Canada. They're very susceptible to being entangled in fishing gear or hit by ships because they're a very coastal species so they're often found close to harbour entrances and things like that and they get hit by and they're slow moving so they get hit by large vessel traffic. Um, we were instrumental in, in developing some acoustic detection systems to help find where those whales were with listening equipment, with hydrophone mm. arrays. We developed some uh, algorithms, some computer software that would listen and detect the very distinctive calls of the North Atlantic right whale. And that has subsequent, subsequently been um, implemented in some fixed buoys, which are um, out in the approaches to ports like Boston oh, really? in the US. And they're used by the US Coast Guard to give advisories to commercial ship traffic over which way they should approach the harbours. So, but, but I'm guessing with only 400 left, there's still more to do, isn't there? There's still a lot more to do. Um, so each 
whale in the population is very, very important. And as possibly as a result of climate change, the areas of habitat that the right whale is now, and are using has shifted a little bit. And where they were previously uh, spending a lot of time in the, during the summer months up in the Bay of Fundy, up in Canada, they seem to have shifted their summer distribution up into the Gulf of St. Lawrence, further north in Canada. The Gulf of St. Lawrence is a very heavily used area by commercial ship traffic. And so we're at the moment developing a project and looking for funding so that we can go and spend some time working with colleagues in Canada in trying to, to try and, try and better understand yeah. their distribution and how they're using those waters. And, and can you tell me, how is climate change affecting um, whales and cetaceans um, generally? Is that affecting the behaviour of other cetaceans? It must be. Climate change is almost certainly affecting whales. There's not a great deal known about it at the moment, but there's a lot of important issues that need to be looked at as, as the ice retreats in the Arctic. And it, what, it, what it's doing is it's shifting the, the habitats that they use. So where previously, um, certainly with northern species, for example, where the, they might be feeding up against the ice edge, um, in, in the Arctic, as the ice is retreating, they're moving further north. Um, and as southern waters are warming up, species which are predominantly warmer water species are also moving north, so there's competition for food, mm -hmm. um, changing use of habitats. And that, that's something that we're also keen to, to work on to try and better mm -hmm. understand. Mm -hmm. And of course, as the Arctic opens up more, as the ice retreats, that means that uh, there'll be commercial ship traffic oh, and course. industrial development yeah. and yeah. fisheries all developing in waters that were previously very little used. And mm. um, it's not really very well understood how that will impact the species that live up there. Everybody knows that whales are very cool. Um, they are extraordinary uh, mammals. Everybody knows about whales, regrets yes. some of the problems they've had, but how important are cetaceans? How, how, why, do, why does it matter? You're, you're right, whales are really cool, everyone loves whales, everyone knows about whales, and I guess people think, you know, whales have been saved, but actually that's not the case. There are many threats to whales these days over and above commercial whaling. Um, there are things like uh, fish uh, interactions with fisheries, um, ship strikes and uh, pollution, things like that. So there's lots still to be learned. And they are still hunting them. And they are still hunting them in some countries as well. Um, whales are a really important part of the marine ecosystem. They're like a litmus paper for the, for the marine environment. They give you a good indication of how healthy it is. They're, they're an important part of the food chain. They contribute to um, carbon capture. So Song of the Whale is now ready to leave us. She's had her pit stop at Burton. She's going back to Ipswich, lots of plans and all the rest of it. And of course, we're hoping that we're going to see her back here and she will have had another adventure. So what is the future? What's, what's, what's the game plan now? There's, there's lots of projects that we'd like to undertake in the future, lots of interesting conservation questions that, that are very important and, and critical that we find answers to them. Um, right now we're developing a, another project on the North Atlantic right whale and, and looking to return to Canada to the Gulf of St Lawrence this time. At the end of the day it always comes down to funding. There's lots of great projects that we could do, really important conservation projects, not, not just the, the science themselves but itself, but in terms of training and bringing on the next generation of, of conservationists and marine scientists. So. I hope to be sitting down with you again in a year's time telling you about where we've been, what we've done, what our future plans are. Um, but ultimately it comes down to actually getting that funding. attracting people to support the work. Right, okay. Well, at Burthen, we've always been really fond of the Song of the Whale project. It's a fantastic project and it really is um, every time I see Song of the Whale come up to dock here, I smile. So if you've got any questions about 
this amazing work that they do um, and if you'd like to contact Richard um, there'll be some details at the end of this video with his so that you can get in touch with him and um, I think we all need to make sure that uh, he gets out there and watches more whales. Thank you. Thank you.